Hi, I'm Scott Hinckley. As you know, I love film. Whether it's a good quote of the day or a movie that I've just recently seen that I'm eager to talk about, film is a big part of my life and I bet it's a big part in your life too. Whether you like comedies or horror films, everyone has their favorite movie and everyone knows that there are certain things that make the films great and I'm here to talk about what those things are. There are five things that make any movie great. Whether critics like it or you like it, to you, these five things are great. It's got to be acting, pacing, originality, character development, and a good script. These are, these are some movies that critics consider great films. Which, again, I agree on most of them. These are some films that I consider to be great films. What do they have in common? They have those exact five things in common. So I'm here to talk to you about them today. Script. Why script is important in a movie. If a movie doesn't have a good script, then it's bound to flop. And here's an example. In the, mo the movie, the original 1989 Batman movie, that movie was almost frowned upon before even it was even released because they told that they were gonna go after a serious, darker tone and the only movie before that about Batman was the 1969 Adam West Batman. And that movie was a smash hit because they had the campiness and fun Batman of the original comics. But the new comics had just started coming out where it was a grittier take, so they decided to make a movie about that. And in a movie like the 1989 Batman movie, it was a success because of its script. Michael Keaton, which at the time was mostly known as a comedic actor, was told to be playing Batman. People were nervous about that because they didn't think he could pull off the serious tone that the movie is trying to convey. But due to the script and the tone that matched perfectly together, that movie was a smash hit. But a movie like Batman and Robin, it failed because of its script. It tried to relive the same campiness as the original Batman with its dialogue, but the 19 it also tried to have that serious tone that the 1989 Batman had so they could make more money but it failed because of its script. Character, and why character development is important in a movie. Character development is important because you go to a movie to see an arc and a character. You don't see, go to a movie to see a character go from point A to point A. In the movie A Christmas Carol, you don't go to the movie to see Ebenezer Scrooge be a grumpy old man and at the end still be that same grumpy old man. In a movie like The Dark Knight, each character in that movie has a strong arc. In a movie like Phantom Menace, there is no arcs. Let's start with Dark Knight. Dark Knight had good character arcs, and each character was well developed, and by the end, you knew his motivations and why he did what he did in the movie. The most strongest character arc in the movie was not Batman or Joker, it was actually Two-Face. Two-Face in the movie had a strongest character arc because he started out the movie as just a normal guy, a politician who loved the city and wanted to protect it with all he had. But by the end of the movie, his face was not only burned and the love of his life killed, he was now the biggest crime boss in all of Gotham City, and he hated everyone for it, for what happened to him and what happened to his uh, wife. In a movie like Episode 1, The Phantom Menace, there's no character arcs throughout the whole entire movie. Whether it's Jar Jar, Anakin Skywalker, or what I'm going to talk about, Darth Maul, no character had an arc in that movie. Darth Maul in the movie was a brooding, menace villain, menacing villain that you wanted to know more about. But by the end of the movie, not only was he killed off, he had no character development. You didn't know where he was coming from or why he wanted to kill the Jedi. He was just mean, bad guy for the Jedis to fight. Pacing. Why pacing is important in a movie? In a movie, the pacing shows how the rest of the film is going to play out. If a movie is all action, 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 and it has no time to settle down and learn the characters and learn the characters' motivations, then the movie's going to fail. But if a movie spends too much time becoming an exposition heavy movie where it's just exposition and exposition in your face and you get bored, that movie is going to fail too because it's not going to be rewatchable. You're not going to want to go see it again and you're going to want your money back. So in a movie like the original Matrix, the movie was a success because of the pacing in the movie. It started out and it gave you a realistic take on how this could actually play out. And it was paced perfectly to where it had action scenes, but then it had exposition so where you could learn 
where the characters were coming from and what was happening in the movie. But in a movie like The Matrix Revolution, it was so jam-packed with a bunch of action scenes and action scenes that you never had time to develop the characters that is supposed to be this finale act about a pretty good franchise and it was failed because it was just action scene after action scene and there was no reason for you to care about what's happening in the finale. Acting. Why acting is important in a movie. Acting, I think, is the most essential part of any movie. If a movie's acting is bad, then it's not going to convey the tones and it's not going to make you feel what the characters are feeling. And that's why you go to a movie, to escape reality. So in a movie that, as good as Rain Man, the acting was so good that the simple premise of two brothers going on a road trip turned out to be so good because of its acting. The actors, Tom Cruise and Dustin Hoffman, gave such good performances that it became Oscar-worthy and it conveyed serious topics of um, abuse towards uh, mentally challenged people and how they're not much different than you and I. But in a movie like The Room, it failed because of its acting. It tried to convey serious tones of abuse towards women, abuse of drugs and alcohol, but the movie was laughable because how bad the acting was. You couldn't feel bad for these characters because you couldn't believe that they were real people and these were real problems that they were having. Originality. If a movie isn't original, then nobody's gonna go see it because they've already seen that exact same movie. And you're probably thinking, well, what about sequels? But if a movie has a sequel and it's a good sequel, then that's different because each good sequel has a new original idea. In a movie like the original Aliens, it was a sci-fi horror film where all the characters were helpless. They didn't have guns. They didn't have a way to fight the alien. <coughs> But in a movie like, term, I mean, Alien 2, Aliens, the, there was millions of, I'm not millions, tens of twenties of aliens, and they had guns, and they fought, and there was new ideas and new characters in it. And one of my favorite movies, Star Wars, the original Star Wars came out, and it was a blockbuster hit because of its original ideas and original characters. But a year later, 1978, Star Crash came out. Nobody went to go see that movie, and that movie failed because people had already seen Star Wars. They had already seen that kind of movie, so it wasn't an original idea. So, you're probably wondering, why should this affect me? Why is this important to my life? Because I think not only are these five things important in movies, but they're in more important in things more important to you, yourself. Let's start with originality. Originality is important because, honestly, who really wants to be exactly like everyone else? Okay, maybe that's a bad idea, but you get my point. My point is, Michael doesn't want to be like Mr. Pryor, and Mr. Pryor doesn't want to be like Michael. You want to be your own person, and you want to have your own ideas and thoughts. Acting. I don't think acting is a literal term. I don't think you act a certain way in life, but the way you act towards people affects how your life turns out. Character development. Again, you don't develop a character because you're just yourself. But, by the time, but at the beginning of life, to your end of your life, you go through your own arc. And the way your arc plays out is dependent on how you turn out in the end. Script. Again, none of these are really literal terms. But it, having a script in your life or having a plan, which is what a script is, a planned thing that they're gonna say, having a script, I mean, having a plan in your life is important because you don't wanna go through your life guessing what you're gonna do next. You want to have some kind of structure because humans love structure. And next, pacing. Why pacing is important and why you, in your life. Pacing is important because if you don't pace yourself in life, you're gonna miss the little moments in life that, like eating dinner with your family or hanging out with your friends. But if you just sit around being lazy every day, that could also be the same exact thing. So, I think these five things are important in all films, but I think they're also important in something much greater, yourself. Make your life the perfect film.